Honesty. I mean, please, just be honest with me here. Ignore what the elites and the chattering classes and the liberal aristocracy tell you. Speak for yourself. Speak from the gut and the heart and the mind. You knew, you knew the slaughter of innocent people, the murder of a child, the smashing to pulp and meat of children and mothers and elderly innocents was almost certainly going to be the work of followers of Islam, of a religion that claims to be one of peace, whose followers have been responsible for 75% of all terrorist attacks in the past 20 to 25 years. I, I say now what we, what we have to say, but surely it, it, it's redundant, that most Muslims, the vast majority of Muslims, are not terrorists and, and who despise and, 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 and reject terrorism. Of course they do. These are my friends, your friends, the people we work with and, and live next door to. But... We're not idiots. We know the dangers of generalization, and we don't imply or believe or state that all Muslims are terrorists. We never do that. That would be crude and dumb and absurd. But, but, simultaneously, we have to say without fear of attack that most terrorists are Muslim. Let me make it plain and clear. OK, Mr. Trudeau. OK, CBC. OK, Toronto Star. Listen, the vast majority of Muslims are not terrorists, but the vast majority of terrorists are Muslim. Yet as soon as such an attack occurs, 9-11, London, Madrid, Bali, Tel Aviv, Moscow, on and on and on and on, we're treated to, to endless moaning from, from Muslim leaders and their enablers about Islamophobia. And now the important thing is, it's not the suffering of the victims, but the need to be nice to Muslims. Well, I'm sorry, guys, but this is total crap. Before 9-11, very few people had, had any notion of Islam or Muslims, so they were indifferent, frankly. It was only after so many followers of Islam declared war on innocent people that innocent people began to question Islam and Muslims. That's not a phobia. That's not a phobia, but identification of a suspect and simple self-defense. The West, indeed, should be congratulated on its real liberalism and tolerance, and also condemned, by the way, for being too weak in its prosecution of the war against terror and allowing so many jihadists into the corridors of power, into countries wherever they want, in any way at all. You will now hear numerous Muslim leaders telling us on TV and radio that this has nothing to do with Islam. Really? Did Muslim armies raping Egypt, Syria, Palestine, North Africa more than a thousand years ago have nothing to do with Islam? Did Muslim armies occupying Spain trying to force their way into Rome and Vienna, stealing Turkey and Constantinople, committing forced conversion and virtual genocide in the Balkans have nothing to do with Islam? Do the plethora of honor killings, forced circumcisions of women, vile treatment of women, homosexuals, converts and Christians and Hindus have nothing to do with Islam? Do the suicide bombings often of their own people? Do the tortures and beheadings? Does Sharia law, does Iranian lunacy all have nothing to do with Islam? Yeah, Lucy Liberal and, and Lenny Lefty, they'll tell you the pro-lifers, Christians, Israelis and Americans are worse, or that Nazis are, are waiting to kill you. But you are not stupid. You know, you know the truth. You know that yes, most Muslims are good, fine people. That within Islam, though, is a defect and a psychosis that hates the spark of human love and empathy so valued in the Christian West. The war has been on for some time. It's just that some of you don't have the wit and the will and the courage to fight back. I'm at a YouTube video of the shootout this morning in Boston leading to the, uh, the execution, the killing, of uh, one of the men accused of murdering innocent people during the Boston Marathon. Wasn't that a brave thing to plant a bomb at the Boston Marathon knowing that the only people who would be killed would be the innocent? But that's so frequently in the way with such terrorism. David Harris is an expert on, on, on terrorism, on intelligence, uh, work for both the government and now in the private sector. Always a pleasure, David. Welcome all the way from Ottawa. Are you in any way surprised by what we have found out today? Uh, not, not terribly. I mean, it's not entirely clear, if you know what I mean, what mm. we've found today. There's been so much 
confusion and uh, some of the misreporting from uh, the earlier U.S. media efforts has been extraordinary and, uh, frankly, a bit hazardous to public safety. Yes. Uh, let's talk about that. I, I'm, it's not the data to, to be too critical, but Boston was closed down. One of the major cities of North America, of the Western world, was closed down. We had hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of of police, heavily armored, some in armored personal carriers, running around the city back and forth. Surely that in itself is a victory for terrorism. I remember living through the IRA campaign in, in England, and a lot of people were killed in those campaigns. There was never an idea of closing down an entire city. Yes, yes. I remember having been in Belfast for part of that phase, and it wasn't... Uh an unforgettable experience. Yes, this is a, a problem we've been very, very concerned about for some years. It's been rather surprising that it hasn't eventuated, at least until now. The idea of small teams with uh, times almost unprepossessing uh, weaponry able to uh, hold to ransom an, an entire city. Now, it leads to the question, well, what happens? And we don't really have any guarantees that this won't uh, occur in this situation, though there's nothing to indicate it will. What happens if you were to have cascading uh, terroristic type events? What if there were a second team, a third team, a fourth and fifth, and then maybe the same city or another city? Mm. What would that do in terms of the ability of uh, public authority to deal with it? to concentrate force and power and intelligence resources on trying to resolve things as they seem to be the focus of events right this second. It's a, it's a very challenging thing, and I have not been persuaded that uh, public authority in uh, any Western jurisdiction has given it the attention it needs. Mm. When I was in England, I, I came back just about a week ago, I, I met with uh, an old friend from university who, who spent 25 years in MI5, and obviously he wasn't going to tell me um, most of what went on, but he did say this. He said that British intelligence, which is really competent, but British intelligence, is, we're always behind the game when it comes to Islam. He said he, we're just catching up now with a situation that's really five years out of date. And, and when Islamic terrorism first came on the scene, we had, we had no one. We, we couldn't translate. We didn't understand. You know, even now today, often we're, we're too trusting of organizations that are extremely militant. Uh, we're searching like crazy for, for so-called moderates to reach out to and try and use them to help us, but it's very, very difficult to do. Does the same apply to North America? Well, I mean, I think in this context, it's got to be made clear that we don't know exactly what the motivations are, but there seem to be signals, at least from the early reports, that Islamism may have played a decisive role in this. And uh, yes, it is very, very difficult, and we in many ways are not making it any easier on ourselves than... Uh, then uh, would uh, frankly seem appropriate. We've got some of these outreach programs that are confusing. We've just had the episode of uh, apparent navel gazing in London, Ontario, in light of the young Muslim folk who were connected to terrorism there. And what did we find? Well, we found that there was a, a significant press conference that was given, a prominent, a very courtly, uh, articulate, and professionally trained imam who was coming out decisively saying that we need to have uh, these kinds of events condemned, that we need to have um, um, people reporting to him and to others in the event of radicalism. But a look at the background suggests that this very imam had been connected to the Gaddafi World Islamic Call Society, an organization that, according to some reliable sources, is a radical organization that may even have been interconnected with terror funding. Um, and what about other issues when you look at London? We've now got in an Islamic chair that is funded by two of the more radical Canadian and American organizations at Huron University College, an affiliate of the University of Western Ontario, a woman who is um, a former president of the Islamic Society of North America, designated organization, designated as an unindicted co-conspirator in a major terror funding trial. And we have this woman who is going to be invited to uh, speak as a keynote speaker to our elites, some of them at least in Ottawa, to benefit a mental health foundation. We have uh, possibly the governor general's wife to appear as a guest at this event. And nobody seems to be asking the kinds of questions that I would certainly hope would be asked if we had a, a Christian chair at a relevant uh, university, uh, the Christian chair having come from an organization that was an unindicted co-conspirator. So these are the kinds of confusions that we seem to have. 
And uh, it's little wonder that we may occasionally be regarded as a soft touch with uh, somewhat limited prospects of a secure future. Mm. You're quite right to say we, we don't know at this stage that there are certain conclusions we can make, but we're, we're being as careful as we can be. But for goodness sake, uh, all the indicators are that there is some sort of Islamic link. It's unlike terrorist campaigns of the past. If people want a specific homeland, if they want a certain army out of a region, you may not agree with that, but you can understand, and maybe there can be some compromise. What, what is being requested here is totally different. It's really you must all die or convert or disappear. So there can be no compromise. It's, it's total victory or complete defeat. Well, and this is where we're frankly not very well tooled uh, as Westerners who have been heavily conditioned to an extraordinarily secure environment as measured against the historical precedents and the other nations that exist in the world. And therefore, it is very difficult for us to understand that perhaps the end game of the kind of disaster we've just seen in the United States is the infliction of massive suffering and injury and ultimately death for the perpetrators. Look, it would have been, I think, to any self-respecting security official, a somewhat ominous sign when the videos of the suspects were shown yesterday and those suspects were revealed to have not taken any particularly uh, significant yep. efforts to hide their faces. Exactly. Well, exactly. guess what the end game might have been in their minds. Yeah. Thank you, as always, for your time. At such a time as this, it, it, it's so important to have you on the, on the show with your experience in intelligence. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Michael.